Good morning. Se habla español, pero también se habla inglés. I know, this, estoy muy güera y piensan que no voy a hablar español, pero por dentro soy mexicana. Soy cafecita por dentro. Um, I'm just going to share really quick something that got put on my heart yesterday driving here. So it's sort of last minute. Thank you, Jacob. Isn't Jacob amazing? Like, what? So I'm, I'm a few years back, um, I started learning about this art form that started in Japan called, I know this feels like we're in Sunday school, right? But wait for it. This is going to be so cool. Um, this art form called Kitsugi. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Has anyone heard of that? Kitsugi. Thank you, Rebecca. That's my daughter. <laughs> she's, she's heard about it. <laughs> so it was started like almost a millennia ago. And they don't really know why it started. They know where it started. But it's this art form. And I wish I, if, if I'd been more prepared, I would have had pictures up here for you guys. But y'all can look it up. Um, they take these pieces of ceramic pottery <coughs> that have broken. And they've, they invented this method of sticking the pieces back together with gold leaf. So now those pieces that they've fixed sell for lots more money. Like their value has gone through the roof. Like if you're actually going to buy an original Kitsuji piece of art, it's thousands of dollars. Whereas if you were going to go buy a vase, you know, it would probably be a couple hundred, you know. So when I learned about this, it just, it just jumped in my spirit because of the reflection that we have in the spirit. So I, that's why I have little things up here. I have to pull this out because it's a plate. And you'll see in a minute why I have it in the Ziploc. I don't want to make a mess. Um, it's a plate. The color is of no consequence, except I needed it to be black so y'all could see what's going to come next. So this is us. We're created. Do we know what this is for? Yes. Especially, Guala will know exactly what it's for. It's for eating food. <laughs> Maybe some tacos could even fit on here. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty plate, right? It's a plate. It's for serving. It's for putting things on. It's for setting on the table. It's maybe if you have a guest, you'll put a little piece of cake on there and serve it to them, especially this size of, of plate, right? Porque si es uno más grande, como que esos, mejor le doy un platito más chico y me alcanza para el que sigue. But this plate, we know exactly what, what it's for. And that's how we are a long time ago. But then things start happening. Things start happening in our life. And things might get a little ugly. This is the ugliness. I know it's pretty, but this might be just a little bit ugly. Especially if it's someone who's coming along and maybe taking wax at you, you know? This, this plate is really heavy, so this is not going to hurt it. But, you know, like, why are you doing this? ¿Por qué me estás? Oh, my gosh, I'm, like, actually breaking the, the Ziploc bag. <laughs> Like, ¿por qué me pasan estas cosas? Why are you saying this, this ugly words to me? Oh. Okay, I'm going to start using this. Oh, sorry. I hope that didn't hit it. Did that hit you, Patsy? 
<laughs> oh my lord. So these these things that start happening, it might be an offense. Somebody comes along and offends you. La suegra. Ay, Dios. Ah. A loss. A loss that you're, it's not your fault. You know, and then just something happens and, and you lose something. It might be an abandonment. You know, when you're a little kid, someone abandons you. It's not your fault. It's not because you did something wrong. Pero son cosas que nos suceden en la vida. Y nos empiezan a desbaratar. Y empecemos a perder nuestra identidad. We don't know who we are anymore. We don't know what it's about anymore. Unfulfilled expectations. Oh, that's a good one. Some more unfulfilled expectations. Prayers unanswered. Man, this, this is really hard. Bad decisions that bring bad consequences. I want to just, I mean, and then sometimes it, it como dice el dicho, um, no es lo tupido, no, no es lo mojado, sino lo tupido. No es lo duro, sino lo tupido. I mean, it's just like one thing after another, after another, that happens in our life. And what happens is this. That's why I needed the Ziploc bag. Does this look like what we just had in our hands? Maybe the same color, but is it usable? Not really. So what do we do? Sometimes we feel like life just picks us up and throws us away. Okay, let's just get rid of that. It's not any use to us anymore. And we feel like life just puts us aside because we have no value. But then, there's this great word in the scripture, nevertheless, nevertheless, his word comes along. And this I want to represent as his word. But like we were talking about last night, for his word to do anything in us or his presence to do anything in us, we have to be there. We have to be in his presence. We have to read his word. But in his word, he said his his love is so strong for us that he gave his only son. In his word, we see that the joy of the Lord, and Pastor Rudy just talked about it, is our strength. We don't understand that. His love covers multitude of sins. I want to read y'all some scripture. For he has rescued us and has drawn us to himself. From the dominion of darkness. How many know you've stepped out of darkness? Some of us might have woke up in darkness today. Well, let me tell you, he's here to take you out of darkness into the dominion of light. Transfer us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption. Ooh, that's a lot of water right there. And he raised us up together with him. When we believed and seated us with him in heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. And he did this so that in the ages to come, he might clearly show the immeasurable and unsurpassed riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus by providing. And that's a lot of verse, but I'm just telling you right there, it's about life. His word comes along and brings life. But thanks be to God who always leads us in what? In victory, in triumph, not in ourselves, 
but in Christ Jesus. And through us, get what this verse says, spreads and makes evident. I'm just going to finish this water here. And makes evident everywhere. Where? We're the ones that are making evident the sweet fragrance of the knowledge of him. And you're like, did you see the bag of pieces that is my life? Yes. And that's why we get in scripture. We let his presence come over us. We let his presence stick the pieces back together. We let his word heal us, transform us, and become the evidence of the sweet fragrance of his work in us. This is a fake piece of Kintsuji. <laughs> and this is a miracle. The miracle of joy. The miracle of peace. The miracle of forgiveness. The miracle of sleep. This is it. And this is us raising up the fragrance of knowing him. I just want to declare this over you. Just close your eyes if you want to. Just let him continue healing those pieces of your heart. Pieces even in your mind. Just let his spirit flow through you. And start binding those together. Into something that's even more beautiful than it was before. I am broken, but not destroyed. I am left but not abandoned. I am hurt, but not unto death. I am sick, but I have a healer. I might be an orphan, but I am not fatherless. I am in pieces, but I am complete. I am complete. In your word, this is the same word that created the world, the stars, the galaxies, the oceans, the fish, the birds, the butterflies, the honeybee. This is your word. This is your truth, which is my freedom. Freedom to be and to become all that you have declared that I am. Wow. I'm gonna, now I'm going to bring my phone because I'm going to show you something else. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> ah, well, we're so happy to be here this weekend and being able to celebrate an amazing thing that is happening here in Freedom Life uh, Center. And also, you know, I, I didn't even think about it until Patsy <clears throat> asked us to come, that today's a year anniversary. And so, before I, I share what I, what I have, I, I'm not going to take long because Lori took all my time, so um, it's okay. I, I told her that she could do it, and, and it, was, it was amazing, right? She always talked to me about it because she did this in a women's event, and I was like, and she was just telling me, oh, and I did this. I was like, oh, that's great. But seeing it, it's, it's really powerful, and, and I believe that's what has happened here in, here in this church. This broken plate, God has put the pieces back together. And like we were saying yesterday, that God spoke about rejoice. And just seeing that beautiful plate is like another affirmation of God saying, you are put together. It's time to celebrate. It's time to put food on that table and feast. Right? Uh, but be before I, I share what I, I have in my heart for, for uh, today, uh, Patsy asked me, Pastora Patsy asked me to... 
uh, to sing a song uh, that I wrote over a year ago. And it was like May, I think. Well, I wrote it like around March, April. And then, um, uh, you know, as I'm writing the song and, and thinking about the arrangement and all that, I, uh, I thought of a sax solo. And obviously, for me at least, the only person that will play a sax solo in my music is Rudy, right? I don't, I don't, I don't have options. It's, because, it's not because there are not any, any more options. It's just for me, he's the guy. And so I called him and said, hey, Rudy. He's like, it was Ugualu. And you know, and so, so hey, man, I need, I need you to do a, a song for me. Like, yeah, sure, send it to me. And so I sent the song. And, and then, um, like, months went by. He's busy with the church and with stuff and all that. And so um, he, um, uh, I called him because he wasn't recording the song. I was like, man, I need you to record this song. And so I called him. And, and, and the funny thing with Rudy and I is because... Um, Every time we, call, we talked about work, you know, music or, or an arrangement or whatever, we always end up talking about life and family. And it will take us like an hour to finish our phone calls. And um, so the last time I talked to Rudy, like on a long phone call, it was because I was telling him, I need this solo. Man, when can you send it? Like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm busy, but I'll send it to you tomorrow or whatever. And... Um, and then that was the last time I talked to him. And then I remember sending him a text like a month later. I don't, I don't know the date. I don't have the exact dates, but I just sent him a text. And that's when he told me that he was going to the hospital. And Patsy was at the hospital, I think, by the, back when I talked to him and all the stuff that you already know what happened. So um, come to find out that that was the last song that Rudy recorded, recorded on earth. It was my song. And that's so special to me to have that memory of my one of my best friends, uh, Rudy, to to tell the world, you know who, uh, what song he recorded for the last time before he went to his mansion, my song. <laughs> so this is a song. Uh, it's called El Lugar Secreto, and I need to read the lyrics because I don't know it by heart.
es donde encuentro mi camino y no necesito nada, nada más que conocer. me llena y que me mueve uh -huh. not an easy service <laughs> you know um, I can pull one of my sermons that I have thank you thank you and I was I remember I remember I was laying down and I was just saying God what what do I say I'm not a very, I'm not a very like deep weird you know like all this stuff and so I was like give me something simple and easy to chew on and God I, I really believe that God just said legacy. And I know it's very obvious, but I just want to talk a few things. I want to share a few things about legacy. Legacy. And the title that I put it, that I put to this sermon is Who Will Do It? That's the title. Who Will Do It? So now, legacy, I found a really awesome um, description of this word. And it says, It is about the richness of the individual's life. Again. It is about the richness of the individual's life, including what the person accomplished and the impact he or she had on people and places. Ultimately, the story of a person's life reflects the individual's legacy. And I thought about Moses. Moses is one of those uh, characters in the Bible that left an amazing legacy. And I just wanna share a few things about Moses because Moses lived a really intense life since he was born. You know, from the day, from the months after he was born, he just went through this adventure of craziness, and it was very intense. And so uh, Moses comes to the point in his life where, where he's called by God, and it's in Exodus 3. You can read it later if you want to. I know you know the Bible by heart, but I don't, so I have to read it. <laughs> Exodus 3, verse 4 says, When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called, him, God called to him out of the bush. And then the Lord said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. 
Moses didn't know what he was answering. He's like, yes, I'm here. <laughs> and then all this stuff started to happen with Moses. Um, I was going to read all these verses. It's like 11 verses, but because of time and, and hunger, I will not do it. But, I mean, we all know the story. We all know the Moses' life. We, we know the challenges he went through. And one of the things that I thought about Moses, the legacy that Moses, Moses left, is the, the legacy of obedience. Because he said, here I am. You know, Moses said, I'm ready. What do you need from me? He obeyed God regardless of his way of thinking, opinion, skills. Or, or the lack of skills. Because you remember when, when God chose him, he said, you're going to talk to the Pharaoh. And he's like, I can't even talk. Like, I'm, I'm, I stutter, you know. And, and I can, and I can. But he was obedient. And he did it regardless of what he, was, he thought he could do or he could do. Um, his obedience. And I, I know sometimes we as, as, as humans, we, it's really hard to obey God because we think, we, I can't. No, I, 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 I can't do that. You know, it's hard or whatever. But. Moses decided to obey regardless of what he could do or not do. So that's one of the things that I see about Moses, that he left a legacy of obedience. And we can learn from his legacy of being obedient. And when God, when God calls your name and says, Lupita, what are you going to say? Uh, what Lupita? You need to say the last name. <laughs> There's millions of Lupitas, you know. But when he calls your name, it's like, what are you going to say? Are you going to say, here I am, and be obedient to what he's about to tell you to do? It can be scary, but let me tell you what. God is a, su such a good father and God that he will not bring you to things that you're not going to be able to handle. He will see Moses. You know, we, know, we, see, we saw his life, and, and, and he was able to handle it. The second legacy that Moses left is the legacy of faithfulness. He was a faithful man to his assignment. You know, when God told him, go and confront, he said, I'm going to do it. He was faithful to, the, to, the, to the, uh, the thing that God told him to do. He was obedient, but also he was faithful because he kept doing it. And he, he was hard. I was looking because I wanted to know how many times Moses had to deal with these people that he brought out of Egypt. Well, God did it through Moses, obviously. But, you know, God told Moses, I'm going I'm to use you to bring all, the, all my people out of uh, uh, slavery and all that stuff. And so he did it. Moses led the people out of Egypt. But then, I mean, we read in the Bible so many times, these people were such stubborn people and just dumb for, not to say another bad word from the Greek <laughs> and I found this list and I, I want to read it to you because it's hilarious 14 times they complain 14 times Re are you ready number one the people complained to Moses that because of him and his talk of a promised land Pharaoh made things worse for them it was Moses' fault. Like, ah, why, why are you doing that? Uh, now Moses, uh, Pharaoh is going to make it harder for us. And he's going to do all these things for us. And, and we're going to be like miserable. And then they start complaining. And Moses like, calm down. It, it, it'll be okay. He was faithful to the assignment that God told him he was, he was going to do. He kept being faithful. Number two, the people complained and said to Moses, let us alone. Leave us alone. Go away and read some books. All the natural liberal people will know that phrase, right? <laughs> Number three, the people complained. Complain or complained? I don't, I don't, I'm a Mexican, so I'm just, I'm, I'm just practicing my English right now. <laughs> complained? Complained. I, I, I know you knew I was Mexican. You're like, he's a weird accent. <laughs> I know. My daughters remind me all the time. The people complained about the bitter water. So they're complaining again. How many have people around your life that are just complaining and complaining? They're never happy. And you're like, you know what? I'm just going to do something else. I'm tired of these people. I'm just going to open my own taco place and I'll do my own thing. And it's hard to be faithful to people like that. 
Number four, the people complain about being hungry. So God gives them uh, manna. Okay, so and, then, and then they're full of food. They're like, oh, man, this manna is so good, right? These tacos are amazing. Mm. But now they're like, where's my water? I'm thirsty. It didn't even say, hey, Moses, can, can we do something about water? You know, like uh, piña colada without alcohol. <laughs> You know, or chata or something. Can you do something? And, and, but they complained. They were like, we're thirsty. Well, do something. Talk to God or something. Because now they're thirsty. Number six, the people forsake the Lord. The Lord orders the Levites to kill 3,000 people by the sword because they worshiped the golden calf. Number seven, the mixed multitude of the people complain about food. So... Another complaint. Number eight, Miriam and Aaron complain about Moses' Moses's leadership. So the Lord curses Miriam with leprosy. Now one of his top leaders are complaining. Yeah. Number nine, the people complain about how difficult it looked to con conquer the giants in the land, so they refuse to enter the promised land. I mean, they're already outside the promised land. That God told them, this is for you. This is yours. Now, he didn't say, it's going to be yours. It's going to be a red carpet. And people are going to give you this amazing welcome. And they're going to be like fireworks. Like, welcome. Take our land. It's yours. It was going to be hard. You know, it was going to take work. They're like, what? You brought us to the, our, our resort? They thought they, I think they thought they were going to get to a resort and... Where's the pool? You know, where's the buffet? And where's all this stuff? And there's none of that. And they start, they start complaining again. And they bring fear to, the, to all the people. These spies, they, they brought fear to the whole uh, people of Israel. And that caused people to, to doubt and not believe. And many of them couldn't get into the promised land because of that. Because of these people complaining and bringing uh, these negative words. And, and, and Moses has to deal with these people again. I think I would have just left him. Like, you know what? Peace out, man. I'm out. I'm, I'm going to my promised land. Wife, kids, let's go. Forget about you. But he was faithful to the assignment that God told him that he was to bring everybody to the promised land. Uh, number 10, the people complained again and wanted to kill Moses. And they wanted to bring another leader. If any of you tries to do that to Patsy, I'm coming with my crew. I have a guy in Nashville. He's loaded with guns. I can show you a picture. And we'll get you. We'll find you. Number 11, the key leaders re re rebel? Rebel. Thank you, teachers. The key leaders rebel against Moses. Oh, rebel. <laughs> <clears throat> that's, how, that's how I was in school. The key leaders rebel against Moses. Um, that's when God opens the, the earth and swallows the offenders. Number 12, the people complain again and they co accuse Moses of killing God's people. My goodness. Number 13, the people contended with Moses again because of no water. And then number 14, the people complain again against God and Moses. Complaints and complaints and problems and issues. And it's not easy to have a church in 2022 after pandemic. It's not easy. You know, and a lot of people left their assignment. I'm not judging them. I'm just saying that's why for me it's very impactful to see Moses being faithful, not to the calling, because we learned this years ago, Lori and I, the calling is God is calling us because we're his children. You know, he's calling everybody because he loves us. But the assignment that God put Moses in front of him, he was faithful to that assignment. And that's a legacy. That's a rich thing to learn from somebody like Moses. The third legacy that I see in Moses is the legacy of intimacy. Intimacy. Moses was a man that had a close relationship with God. You know, Exodus 33, verse 
verse 11 says, says, Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks to his friend. When Moses turned again into the camp, his assistant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. We, know, we all know that Moses had a deep and, and strong relationship with God. And I wish I could say that about me. I, it's not the case, or many of us may be. You know, be, to be honest. But I, I, I want to leave that legacy like Moses left it. Now, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to turn the name of Moses to Rudy. So I was thinking about Rudy. So I want to honor him today because this building is a legacy that he left. And it's beautiful, and the signs are beautiful, and, and everything is beautiful. But m m most or more beautiful than all this is the legacy that he left for you guys. It, has to do any, it doesn't have to do anything with concrete and, and wood and cables and lights. Number one, Rudy was an obedient man. I know Rudy since 30, like, like, 30, no, like 50 pounds ago, maybe. <laughs> I was skinny. I was really skinny. Somebody sent me a picture. I mean, I've seen this picture all the time, but somebody sent me the picture. Uh, we're in the studio in Durango. And that's, I think that was the first time I met him because uh, Marcos was, we were doing this recording for Juan Carlos Alvarado and and I think Rudy already had done something for Marcos. I don't remember the whole story about it. Maybe you remember. I don't know. But Marcos says, we needed a saxophone player. And so Marcos said, I'm going to bring this guy from San Antonio. And so that's when he brought Rudy to Durango. And we have a picture in the studio. And I'm like, I'm a stick. Like, I'm so skinny. And Rudy was super skinny, too. Um, didn't last long, but I'm <laughs> kidding. Um, and I mean, stories and stories and, and just talking to him. And like, like Patsy was saying, they moved to Mexico. You know, Patsy, I remember Patsy, she was like, what am I doing here? She was, she was such a gringa. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, the dust, oh my God. <laughs> There's no AC. <laughs> ah. But then God told him, you're going back to Mexico, to the US. And even though, you know, we had fun in Durango, but he was obedient to the assignment that God was putting in his heart. And let me tell you something. It's not easy to live a life that, the, the life that Rudy had back then, it was really nice and comfortable. He was traveling, you know, nice hotels, well, sometimes, you know, and, and people are, are like all around you, oh, Rudy, oh, Marcos, oh, da, 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 da. the green rooms, the food, you know, the, all, the, all the amenities that comes with being known and, 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 and coming back with money and let's go travel and you don't have to deal with people, you know, like these complainers from Moses, you don't have to deal with all that stuff, you know, you're just having a good life and I remember coming to their home and I was like, man, Rudy, what are you selling, where, where, what's the other business because... This house is beautiful, but it's because they knew how to, they know how to paint a, 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 the, the perfect way and the nice furniture and the nice plant in the corner and all that stuff. Um, you guys could have been like the, the, the fixture opera guys. You were to start your own thing. So it was like that, you know? It's, so it's not easy to resign all that and start a church in the little room with Benji in the front, yawning, and a few people come and, you know, and then next Sunday, from the 10 they came, just five came back, and, and then, you know, you start working with people, and I'm not saying that this is your, I know this doesn't happen here, but then, you know, people, ah, oh, that's too loud. Uh, and, and it's, it's hot. I'm gonna go to another church because they, the AC is better and, and stuff like that. But he was obedient. He left all that glamorous life to start something. Those are some of the decisions that he made. It was, I know it wasn't easy, but he obeyed. And I really see that Rudy 
also left a legacy of obedience. He, was an obedi he is an obedient man. I need to change my vocabulary because he still exists. We just don't see him. Nobody said amen. What? what? Huh? Huh? Eternity, you know? He still lives. <laughs> Rudy is a faithful man. He was and he is. First faithful to his bride, Patsy. You know, we hang out a lot. We travel many places together. Something I never saw from Rudy that I saw in other guys. I'm not going to say the names, obviously, because we're not gossiping. I know you want to know, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it. They like, shoot. I want to know. No. I'll tell you later. Um, I never saw him flirt. I never, I never saw him, like, talking weird to other ladies. You know, like, all these women that sometimes will come up to us and, oh, can I take a picture? <laughs> and they're just there, and they're like, calm down. You know, like, sure, um, let me see. Uh, I never saw him doing nothing indecent. Um, there was never a rumor about Rudy. You know, some people carry some rumors with them, and and I'm not saying that it's true or not. It's just I'm just saying that when there's noise, it's because there's water running under the bridge. So, I don't know. but with Rudy, there was never the case. He was faithful. He was faithful to his kids, always there for them, always. I remember when uh, uh, Jacob posted this, the yellow jacket or sweater was it? Jacob, like a, like a jacket, right? Huh? Yeah, a windbreaker, a jacket. And I was like, man, that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful story because, I mean, Rudy wanted to make sure that Jacob would see him play from afar, like, oh, that's, that's my dad. You know, he was faithful to his children, always making sure that they knew he was there for them. Uh, and then all the stories that Sarah shared that back uh, uh, the service last year about him bringing food and being there. And, and I know, Benji, you have your own stories. You don't tell me your stories because you never want to talk to me. <laughs> the only thing you do is making fun of my accent. It's okay. Um, faithful to this church. Faithful to Freedom Life Center. He never stepped back or doubted of his assignment to this place. I know, and I know many times it was hard. And it still is, but I never, when we talked about church and, you know, he, what he was doing, he was never like, oh, man, yeah, it's just uh, my leaders, man. I'm done with this. No, never. He never complained. I never heard a complaint from this guy. It was, I, I, on the other hand, he was always encouraging me. Come on, Kuala, you can do it. No, when I told him about we starting a church, Lori and I was like, oh, man. And he, I remember he told me, you need to ask pastors for $100 a month, send a letter. And I was like, I don't want to do that. You know? And so he's like, I'll, I'll be the first one. So remember, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. But he said, I'll be the first one to do that. You know? Faithful to this church. Faithful to this place. And the third legacy that he left is uh, the legacy of intimacy. His relationship with God. Now, I, I didn't live with Rudy. I mean, we probably spent a few times at a hotel in the same room, you know, but I didn't live with him. But, but I know this. You only reflect what you have in front of you. In other words, sooner or later, the fruit of your heart will show up and people will see what seeds are growing in you. So you can tell me you pray and then you read your Bible 24 hours, but you're a complainer and you're rude and you're mean and you, have a, and you're, uh, uh, you, don't, you don't fulfill your work. I will, I'm not saying that I'm going to judge you, but I, I would like to say, like, really? You really? Because if you're doing all that stuff, if you're like in, connected with, the, with God in that level, it, it's going to show. And that's how I know Rudy had this level of intimacy with God because... His persona 
reflected that intimacy. You know, like I said, always encouraging, always uh, loving his son. I never, I never, maybe I, I, it happened, I don't know. I never saw him disrespecting his wife or talking back to his children, to, to his kids. I might influence it, influenced, ah, this English, I sometimes gets on my nerves. <laughs> I'm, I might influence him a little bit to say a bad word here and there, but he never said it. <laughs> I taught him a few Mexican bad words, and he's like, <gasps> I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say, because we're in the house of God. <laughs> I'm gonna behave. But he, he, he was always like, you know, the jokes were clean and we would laugh a lot, but he was a guy that reflected that relationship with God in such a beautiful way and, and just honest and transparent. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not talking to the choir. I'm preaching to the choir. But this is how I want to end. And if Jacob, can you come, please? Or, or the musicians. Um, this is, this is the, the, the altar call, if you, if you will that I want to do this morning, this afternoon already. And if you want to answer that question, I'm going to ask you to stand, but only after I ask this question, okay? Who will do it again? Who will continue his legacy? Who will continue his legacy? It, it does, if you, you, you say, I want to continue the legacy, legacy of obedience, of faithfulness, and of intimacy with God. Then stand. Thank you, Lord. Hmm. Make sure that you stood because this commitment is not with me. It's with, it's with the Lord. And maybe some of you that stood, you're like, yeah, I, I, my, my relationship right now is not the best, but I'm going to work because I want to continue pastors, Pastor Rudy's legacy. I'm being disobedient. You know, I... I've been considering not to keep going because it's hard. You standing up today, you're saying, I'm going to keep walking, even if sometimes it's just crawling. But I will continue the legacy that Pastor Rudy lived his whole life. This is his legacy. You know? All these people standing up and saying, I want to do it. I want to do it. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you for allowing us today to take the baton. And now, it's our turn to move forward. Keep walking. Keep believing and obeying and being faithful and being close to you. I thank you for the legacy that Rudy left, but I also thank you for the legacy that you're going to start right now today with people saying I will continue I don't care how hard it is I don't care how tough it is I'm going to do it I'm going to do it because it's worth it but I pray for this uh, place for Freedom Life Center Lord I thank you for what you spoke yesterday it wasn't planned it's funny because Lori started sharing something when she, uh, at the beginning of the night of worship, and I couldn't hear her because I had my, my in-ear, and I, can, I, I didn't hear what she said about joy. I just said, I, I just, she said something about joy, and 
but I, I didn't hear. And then when I, it was my time to keep singing and ministering and all that, I just really felt in my heart that God was saying, it's time to celebrate. It's time to laugh. It's time to be happy. And I just want to, again, remind you, because many of you weren't here today, but I just want to remind you again, it's time to celebrate. And I was so happy for you, Patsy, when you shared it right now, what you shared. You know, because like I said, I didn't really know what was going to happen yesterday. I, those things, uh, sometimes we don't plan them. Obviously, we say we're going to do these songs, but it was just so, I was so sure of that word. That God says, it's time to celebrate. It's time to be happy. It's time to rejoice. It's okay to laugh. It's okay if you don't cry or if you don't cry as much as you will cry before. Sometimes people feel guilty. It's like, oh, I don't feel sad anymore. That's okay. That's okay. Or if you keep crying, that's also okay. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to put this pressure on some of you that says, but I still feel sad. That's fine. Just now, ask the Lord, Lord, you promise you will take these ashes and put beauty instead. But I just believe that God did something. There was a breakthrough last night. And, and, and Pastor uh, Patsy just sharing with that. It, it needs to be an inspiration for some of you that are struggling with that. To say, she can do it, I can do it. But I just want you to raise your hands for 30 seconds. I just said, Lord, thank you. Thank you that you are good, that you are faithful. Thank you that we can trust in you. And that from now on, Lord, we will see a fruit of joy. We will see fruits of peace, restoration, like this beautiful plate that we just saw. Lord, that people's lives, hearts will be restored, put back together with more value than ever. Because it's you, Lord, that's doing this. Hallelujah, Lord, thank you, thank you.